Thanks, Jeff. Well, then, are, were you? Did you want to start, Leslie? On on where well, you're? Sure. I feel like we kind of all know each other, so I don't necessarily <laughs> need to like introduce myself. Um, but glad you could all join us, and we just thought it would be a fun icebreaker to talk about a place you've been before, a place you want to go in the future, and um, behind me, oops, there, is a picture of the Italian Tuscany countryside where Jeff and I were like six months ago. And oh, nice. so it's just super sad now to think that all this travel has been shut down and people aren't really going places like they used to be, but hopefully sometime in the near future. Anyways, this place, this is a picture from the patio of this castle that's now like a super fancy hotel. We didn't stay there, but we just ate there <laughs> so I could go in. <laughs> and it was lovely. And it had this beautiful view. And well, you just, my you just favorite moments home. of my vacation. I'm sorry, what? You got home just before things all broke hell. Yeah, we did. Well, yeah, we were there in October, so oh, we well. were back early enough. <laughs> Who else? Uh, well, I'll I'll go. I'll I don't have my background. I'm. Um, but um, we've been to Hawaii and that's been a fun trip that we've taken. And then we were going to go, our plan was for the summer to take the kids to, um, to Europe and go to um, London and Paris. Um, and so we had just gotten everybody's uh, uh, passports and we started the whole process and we were just getting ready to buy the tickets when everything happened. So um, anyway, so I don't know when we'll do it, but hopefully before they actually start doing it on their own. That was my fear. I'm like, Ed, if we don't do it now, they're go Shannon's going to do it, you know, on her own. And so I kind of want to, you know, do right. go abroad with them. So yeah. Anyway, so fingers crossed that. <laughs> but Hawaii has been. We've done that, and that's fun, of course. So and I wore a Hawaiian shirt. So. <laughs> oh. Nice. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs> That's great. Well, my background, if I could have gotten it up there, is um, a scene from uh, our, our summer camp on the Stanislaus River where we go every summer. And we don't know about this summer. We are hoping to go, but we don't know for sure whether that's going to work out or not. I had a lovely uh, scene of us sitting at our, at our table on the bluff overlooking the rapids. And it's... Um, it's a beautiful place to camp. We, I've been going up there since 1954. So wow. it's, a, it's, it's a second home. But I couldn't get, I, I, my technology wasn't working tonight. Sorry about that. Oh. Well, next time we're together, you can bring a picture. Right. <laughs> right. I, I um, forgot that it was an around the world party until I was looking for the Zoom connection. But uh, like I said, before Jane and Heather came on, hanging on the wall behind me is a picture of the plaza in Kansas City. So Nate and I stayed there for our honeymoon, or the night after we got married. Um, yeah, it's just a really pretty place. <laughs> nice. So it will, I'm, I'm, um, you guys know that I lost my good friend in January, um, my friend that I've had since we were like in preschool together. But I'm really, um, as sad it is, as it is to lose her, I'm really grateful that I got to go home so many times in the past year. I was, I got to spend a lot of time with my family and now it's going to be a while probably, but yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah. Where are you, Jeff? Is this, this, this is the Hoodoos in, um, in Utah. It's, Bryce Canyon. Uh, it's uh, Bryce Canyon. It's one of the, the more popular, um, National Parks. We went on an RV trip, probably the best vacation I've ever been on. And this was eight years ago. So the kids were younger, as Heather's talking about, trying to do something before the kids leave the nest, right? So we, we rented an RV and we flew to um, Vegas. Actually, we flew to Vegas, rented an RV there. And we went to Grand Canyon, Bryce, Zion, Mesa Verde. It was like a 10-day RV trip. Oh. Best. I recommend it highly for anyone that wants to 
maybe shelter with your family. So <laughs> anyways, uh, this was a picture we took and this is the famous hoodoos. Those are the, that's the term they call these rock formations that are in the canyon. That's awesome. You want to tell the story about the mules? Yes, okay, so we, <laughs> you can walk down in there and we did that, but then you can rent horses or mules and go on a, a longer trip. And so we got five horses lined up and they take a look at me and they say, how much do you weigh? And I said, oh. Well, we knew going into it that we were maybe treading the line. Right. But Jeff decides to brazen it out. Yeah, she says, we have a 220 pound limit. And I, I was like 230, right? And so <laughs> I go, oh, I'm fine. I'm totally fine. And she has, well, we have a scale right here. Oh. Oh. I, I know, I realized right? that, that, I mean, she totally was staring me down saying, get on the scale. <laughs> and at that point I was committed. So I had to bluff it out. I said, okay, bring it out. Let's get on the scale. And <laughs> I was slightly too heavy for, for the horses, and so I had to stay behind. It was shameful. I sat in the lobby and had a latte while the family rode their mules down into this. this <laughs> so forever, it's a shameful experience for me. <laughs> oh, jeez. You couldn't have, like, just stood a little, like, put your finger on something beside you? Or, like, I tried. There was nothing to, like... <laughs> I did as much as I could to lean out, and it just didn't work. And That's what I woman, do when I weigh myself. I put my hand on the, the ledge right. for the no. third. <laughs> this park ranger is an expert at eyeing somebody and determining within three pounds of how much they weigh. Trust me. Oh, well, the mule might have known the difference, too. Yeah, I, I, I think it's for my own safety that I was rejected. It was okay. Glad you found us. Hi, Jenny. You're on mute. Jenny, I need you to unmute yourself so we can hear you. <laughs> we can hear you. Yeah. It's nice to see you without a mask, by the way. <laughs> Un can you unmute? Yep, there we go. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, there you go. Yeah, no, we had to <laughs> install new software for the app. Right. And all oh, that, yes. So. I'm sorry. Well, anyway, <laughs> good to see you. And yes, without a mask. <laughs> Why, where have you two been? Uh, oh, we kitchen. volunteer at Martha's Kitchen together. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first day we started do, 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 and all the people we have in common. So mm -hmm. that's why I texted you, Leslie, and asked, how do you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. awesome. Nice. So anyway, well, I'm Jenny Verdonk, everyone. Sorry. Um, my kids are out of San Jose Unified now, uh, though we, my kids had a great experience. Um, our, my oldest, my daughter, is the same age. Leslie and I know each other from uh, Las Madres. So oh, we have kids wow. that are the same okay. ages. So, oh. Yeah. But I've always been very involved in the school system, um, lots of volunteering and committees and all that, like I'm sure many of you. And so I thought I'd just listen to what you had to say. Great. Well, I, I need to warn you, one of the guests that couldn't make it asked if we record. So we're recording. Is that Oh, sure. Asked? Okay. All right. And then um, we were asking everyone about their, their, their travel spot, their tourist place in the world that they like to go. Oh. <laughs> I don't get to travel that much. Our family's all out of state, so I'm stuck with like Edmonton, Alberta and... <laughs> Austin, Texas. <laughs> how about Northern Arizona? And Northern Arizona. Yeah. We're hoping to go there in August. So oh, we'll see. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. We're kind of campers and local staycation people. Good. Yeah. We were just talking, Jeff's picture is from when we were on an RV trip. And I've heard that since the coronavirus, stock in all the RV rental companies has gone like through the roof because oh, people are yeah. scared to stay at hotels. But I think, right. you know, in an RV, you can cook for yourself and you could clean it down and then you're not having to move hotel rooms and people coming in and... Right. <laughs> you're just all stuck in a little space screaming at each other because nothing's <clears throat> clean and the one little porta potty you have is... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds like I'll every day wait, right thank now. thank you. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was thinking, Jeff. <laughs> It's the four of us in one bathroom. It's no different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't well, believe how much more I have those... to clean the bathrooms. What? Was that? I, I can't believe how much more we all have to clean the bathrooms. Like when you're home all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
thing. <laughs> yeah. Toilets. Anyway, Kristen, where are you? It looks I'm like you're Japan. either in Japan. Okay. I'm in Japan with the beautiful cherry blossoms. I looked over my shoulder like I could see them. <laughs> <laughs> you're right there. <laughs> Uh, Steve's brother was stationed in Okinawa and we had the opportunity when the boys were little like two and four to go before they got moved out of their their appointment there so we went to Okinawa and got onto the mainland and went to um, rode the Shinkansen and all those great things and I, boy I would ride the Shinkansen again that was a thrill ride so I, I really enjoyed it there and it was beautiful and then the blossoms were out we were there in about February so it was just beautiful. I'd, I would gladly go again. Yes, I miss it. And the food. <laughs> so, Kristen, I was not sure. I know you've been having some different little chat groups like this, and I'm not sure if you have a normal flow of you talk a bit and talk about why you're doing this and what you're thinking, and then we all ask questions or... That's exactly that. So, so yes and no. Yes, I've had talks, but they've been talks about um, special education during COVID, education during COVID. Um, I brought in a group to talk about uh, how the county was set up to respond to um, survivors of abuse. And, uh, you know, so I've had community conversations, but this is my first um, house party. So I really appreciate your hosting it. And, uh, <laughs> Mm -hmm. Such as it is. Such yeah. as it is. <laughs> right? So, so I'm, I'm taking a campaign class because I'm not a political person. And I keep asking, you know, at the beginning of the class, they're like, oh, you could go and knock on all the doors. And I'm like, what else do you got? <laughs> you know? yeah. so, but it's been, it's been nice. I mean, um, I've attended a few other people's uh, open houses and, and, it's nice to learn more about other people that are running for office. And um, out of that, I've gotten to know, like Anne Ravel, I, I didn't know her very well. And um, I'm helping uh, our trustee DeSalvo is, will be talking next week with us about reopening schools. Cause I think we all are curious about what that's gonna look like, how the county is responding to it. Um, you know, the state is finally fumbling through some guidelines and we would just like to see how that translates as it comes to the county and then to our district because everyone's going to have their own take so um but what i really appreciate about leslie is when i first said hey i'm wondering if you could help me i'm going to run for school board she said oh kristen <laughs> I'm, I'm disappointed in you <laughs> and i was like i hear you because you know, of, of all the things, um, school board is not a glorious position because y you tend mm -hmm. to be in a position where you're upsetting a lot of people and you have very limited authority. But I've been advocating for students for about five years and it began when my um, youngest son was restrained in prone restraint. And, you know, I, I sat with him in the car and he said, I can't breathe. And I thought, wow, you know, what, what's that about? And I'm no, 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 the hood was over your face. Of course you can breathe. He's like, no, mom, I couldn't do that. And, you know, now that we hear these stories of people restrained by police officers also, you know, and not having the chance to talk to someone about it after the fact, um, I was really devastated that something like that was allowed in our district. And it was specifically written at the time in a policy for students with disabilities. So, um, I started writing letters, emailing the board members, asking them to remove this from their policy, and it wasn't happening. And when I met with other special ed advocates, they said, mm, you have the wrong argument. Um, you need to use the equity argument because if it's specific to students with disabilities, it's inequitable. And that argument at least got San Jose Unified to take it out of their policy. Um, but then last August, they reintroduced it. and. Um, I had a letter from Senator Bell, I had other parents behind me, and it still went through. So I, I took a break and, um, sorry, someone's trying to call me. I, I, um, I went right to the registrar's office and said, okay, I'm done trying to communicate and not being heard and feeling like there needs to be people that listen on the board. So I will run for school board 
and that will at least give me an opportunity to use that authority to advocate further. But on this journey of just advocating strictly for a ban on prone restraint, um, I did, I have had success with our county office. They ban it. They ask districts to join them. And I'm pushing for a ban at the state level. And I'm working through the school districts. A lot of wonderful people have tweeted about it. I'm tweeting back to them. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Trying to get the information out there. Um, but I've, there's a, when you're trying to, advocate, you learn how communication works in the district. And um, I've, I've often felt that the communication has not been productive. Um, it seems like a lot of messages that I'm receiving are from that stance of on a need to know basis. And I'm chairing the Community Advisory Committee for Special Education. And when I'm given information that's like, well, that was on a need to know basis. It's like, but it's not, you've missed the opportunity for a group to then advise you. And we're an advisory committee. So I feel like some of the communication needs to change and I would like to work on that aspect of it. And I'm not alone. I've, um, you know, there are board members already on the board that are trying to make the same headway and, and making some headway already. Um, I know that Jose Magana has really pushed for some programs to change and has been able to get that through. So we're, we're um, I <laughs> communicate a lot with other board members already. Um, and then the, the mental health aspect of how things are handled in middle and high school has been troubling me because um, it seems like the social emotional learning that they're doing in the elementary school programs drops off in middle school. And then in middle school and high school, we have very stressed out children, we have very stressed out staff, and we're not supporting everyone in the right way. So I would like to see some programs come into place. Um, I've been looking at other high schools and middle schools and what they're doing for their students and staff. And it's very interesting um, you know, to see how a high school district will teach their teachers some tools and aspects of mental health and what it looks like in teenagers and and get the teachers to then work with the students because boy they're with the students all the time but also um to to hear how to learn some of the social emotional learning programs that are out there that are geared now more towards our middle school and high school students and, and um helping break some of the stigma around mental health issues so that students are uh, more comfortable in their own skin when they start to face these challenges uh, to because you can't tame it until you name it is one of the phrases, but it's very true. Um, so I would like to see mental health across the board. So there's a lot I would like to change and I can't do it just as a parent. And so I'm feeling very comfortable running for school board and hoping to push these changes and then have the authority of the title to help me with the advocacy I like to do. So with that, I'll ask you any questions or concerns. I, ha I have one. Um, Thank tell you. us a little bit about how the school board is constituted and are you uh, taking someone's place or are you opposing someone? Okay, so the school board is, um, the, the district is divvied up into five different areas. And so every other, every other two years, there's a transition of school board members. And so I'm, I would be representing an area called Trustee Area 3, which is specific to the Willow Glen aspect. So the three Willow Glen schools, plus Bookson, um, Hammer, Galarza, Gardner, Schellenberger, which I think is through Eugene, and um, I swear I'm missing one, River Glen. Um, so, so those would be the schools assigned to my area. So that the, the each trustee is assigned a specific area. And the, the person currently in the trustee area three seat was appointed by the board because we, Pam Foley was, uh, Pam Foley went up to be, uh, ran for city council and uh, she won. And so now that she's a city council member that left open a seat about a year ago. Um, and 
I, 12 people put in their names in the hat to be interviewed by the school board. We gave them our resumes. We came and answered questions one evening at the middle school theater. And out of those 12, they elected Carla Collins. And so she would be the person I'm running against for the seat now, but she's board appointed. So, so she's been incumbent for about six months or close to a year or something like that? Yeah. Just every year, just every year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is she, uh, how, how do you feel about facing her? I feel comfortable. We're, we're different. We both are strong advocates. Um, she's been involved with a lot of, um, let's see, she's been involved at the county level. She's work, working in the offices at the county level. So she's, um, she's politically stronger than I am, but I don't know that she's as community involved as I am. So and I, I think it will come down to, you know, people deciding if they want someone that you, you, getting a grasp from either of us of how we view the needs of our students. And I think that's what people will be making their decision. And the needs of our students have changed like that in the last three months, right? <laughs> remote learning and yeah. So there's, there's a lot to consider right now. And I think this year it's even more important. So it's, it's, so it's all the trustees, well, let's see. So the Will Glen area is up, the, the Almaden Valley area, the, the trustee for that area is up. And then um, kind of this pocket of, of San Jose that's just south of 87 and, um, gosh, I don't know my, I need well, Gardner? to- Gardner, is out. it called Gardner? No, no, Gardner is in the, the Willow Glen pocket, um, but I'm, I'm thinking kind of um, more of the downtown area. It's a Teresa Castellanos, a lot of the downtown area, and her area, she, her position is up too, but no one's running against her. She's, she's been in, in her board position for years, so yeah, I hope. So is what are you in, uh, do you have a... Uh, a limit on how much money you can spend on a campaign and how are how are you going to raise money so you there there is not a limit that i've seen for school board members and um my our family has decided that we're going to raise as much as needs to be raised for a successful campaign when i met with pam foley early on to talk to her about how this works because I'm not from a political background. She said, look, I raised about 25 grand and you're probably going to need to do about 35 to 45 to be successful. And at that time, I think she was thinking I'd be paying for a lot of flyers to leave at doors. And now it's, it, that's different, right? It's even more expensive, but there's also a lot of, um, there's a whole data platforms where I can send off an email, pennies an email out to thousands of people. So there's, there's different ways to reach out and um, including picking up the phone and making a bunch of phone calls. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and your website was great. Called. Thank you. You got to visit it? Yeah. Great. Good. And will you have a postcard writing committee? Will I have a postcard writing committee? Huh. Um, I don't know. I, I would probably have people making calls more than writing postcards because they'd be published postcards and the labels are, I mean, it's produced at, all at the printers. So I don't know. Jane, I will think about that. Thank you. <laughs> because I'd be glad to, to address post, postcards for you. Thank you. Ooh. So Kristen, okay. you had mentioned in general um, that you felt that middle school and high school kids um we're facing challenges but mm -hmm. what specifically are you hoping to change what do you want to do for them so i'm i'm really pleased by the um wellness center that was sent up at pioneer and i like the concept that they have put forth where not only are they set up to offer a teaching opportunity to the students of this is what mental health is and um, this is what it looks like when, when you're sad, but this is what it looks like when you're depressed. And, and this is how it can be displayed in your body. You know, that constant stomach ache is not your diet. It's something, it could be something else going on. Um, so I like this proactive direction with mental health, 
where there's an open discussion about those needs. And I appreciate that the Wellness Center has become a drop-in space where staff and students can go that's designed to kind of shut out the noise. You walk in, there's scent in the air, there's um, a different ambiance, the lights are dim, there's soft music playing. You check in and you just say, if you want a break, if you just need a break from the noise, that's the place to go because our libraries are not always open. So I'm sorry, this is a place on their school campus. It's a room in their school campus and there's a staff member there, I imagine. And Right. And the staff member is, is a staff member that has that that um, welfare credential so that they can work with the students. Right. And they will if the student is checked or staff members checking in with more severe needs than just taking a break and working through their own meditation. It's, um, they will connect them to the right counseling and the right support that they need. So you're hoping to get a room like that on all of the middle and high school campuses? Is that what you're saying? I, ideally, there would be a drop-in wellness center, but I've, I've had some great conversations with Tina Von Lehoven about the fact that that's just not going to be feasible this year, right? Because we don't know how any spaces are being used on the campuses right now. Mm -hmm. So we've been working on a until we're centered plan because we won't have a center. <laughs> so until we're centered, we're looking at that aspect of how do we then offer maybe a a quiet space for the students to go during that tutorial time if they're on campus, right? A place where they could go where the noise of the campus is shut out and it gives them a chance to recharge their batteries because not everyone recharges their batteries in a crowd. Sometimes you need a break to do that. Or maybe they're just going from something and just need a quiet space to go to just kind of collect themselves so that they could face the rest of the day because of whatever they've had to go through in that morning. Um, or maybe- What kind of staff member would be Post would be in there. So Marianne has offered to, she's, she's one of the main counselors there, right? Um, and she would be- oh, So the there. school counselor yes. at every site would be there? Yes. Okay. It would, it would need to be someone with that background to really be able to work well with, that, that's already connected with the kids that the kids already trust and the staff already trust, right? Right. No, I just know, um, you know, because I work at a lot of uh, school campuses, usually those counselors, um, they don't get to just stay in one room and hang out and wait. They are seeing students for specific reasons, or maybe you have a student who's having a huge issue. They've got to leave and go to the classroom, or like there are a lot of outlying factors. So I was just wondering how this would be sustainable. So we were talking about the, um Specifically to, to Willa Glenn, we were talking about the, the fact that they have um, additional hours coming for having a counselor for Mary Center on the, the campus, but it's, it's about two hours a day. And so um, we were trying to coordinate with the campus if, if that time, because the, the um, tutorial time is just about a half an hour, right? So if we could have that person's time overlap that half hour so they could help manage that room in case Marianne has to leave and is on call. So that they're dedicated to that, but Marianne would be there as, as a faculty backup. Okay, so, so, so but that's your main platform is to, for health and wellness for students, that's your focus. For, for students and staff. I mean, staff are going through a lot right now, right? Mm -hmm. So the quiet space, if, it, if it's only for students, there needs to be, you know, the break room on some campuses has kind of gotten pushed to the wayside, right? Um, so trying to create a quiet space also where teachers could just go and get that break. It's not always the break room on a, on a school site. Mm -hmm. So definitely, and, and it also bringing in the social emotional learning onto the campuses, and that would be, you know, um, I've been looking at this, the Sky School program that has been talking a lot to the district about their program. Um, I was also looking at a mindfulness program, um, but the professional development hours are just too much for teachers. Mm -hmm. So um, the district is looking at, at Sky School and another group, but but I'm not, um, 
I'm trying to coordinate with the Jody Lack's team on what they're looking at. And at this time, they're just not getting back to me. And I'm just being respectful that they're preoccupied right now. Mm -hmm. you know? But the push has been for um, social emotional learning and, and counseling options to improve in middle and high schools. And the county has even, um, Dr. Dewan is waiting to hear back because she'd put she put in the paperwork for a grant to open up something like wellness centers at all the middle schools in the county. So we're waiting to hear if that funding's coming or not. And after all this, I'm, I'm concerned that that won't be happening, of course. But um, I'm, you know, it, it's that game of wait and see. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's really interesting. So what is your how are you operating in the schools at this time? Just as a volunteer or as an interested parent going in, how are you getting all this information? So I, I chair the Community Advisory Committee for Special Education, and um, I have been attending other, other community meetings for over a year. So I will attend the DLAC meetings, which is the English Language Learner meetings, which has helped me understand the programs that the district has in place to support those students and some of the issues that they face. And um, I've attended a few of the VIP meetings and that's voluntary integration plan. Um, and they work a lot on the equity issues throughout the district. And uh, of course I've been attending all the board meetings I can make. Um, and um, the PTA council and I've been attending in Willow Glen. I've attended the PTA meetings for Willow Glen Elementary and the Willow Glen Foundation. I've attended a couple of their meetings. So I, you, you don't learn about what's going on until you sit through these meetings and begin to listen and make those connections. Um, and then for the, for the Community Advisory Committee of Special Education that I've chaired, half of our students are from um, Spanish, well, are, are Latino, and then a quarter of them are from Spanish-speaking households. And we haven't had enough Spanish-speaking parents show up to our, our meetings. I mean, often it's n no one. Um, so I've been reaching out to Sacred Heart and working with Sacred Heart and bringing those parents in. And they flipped it on me. They said, you know what, come to us, come talk to our parents here. And so I went and talked to the parents there and at Gardner and at Galarza where they were meeting and having their outreach through Sacred Heart. And then Sacred Heart started asking me to work with their families and um, help them with their advocacy efforts for their own children, often in special education. And um, it's just in those ways, I'm into the schools and, and working with the families. Mm. Wow, you've been busy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I know it's something that's on a lot of people's minds, and it's something that's come up at the foundation meetings in the past. And in fact, Michelle, do you remember, Heather, if it was last year or like maybe the end of the previous year when we helped sponsor that speaker? For the middle and the high school was, was that, that the video? video it was the angst movie wasn't it yeah yeah that was it yeah mm -hmm. I, th I thought that was important i mean it was if that was the the movie angst does a nice job about spelling out the difference between um you know just having that the healthier um anguish that we all you know, we'll have a little bit, but, but when it goes beyond and you need support and um, it could alter your behavior and, you know, really impact your life, then you might need support. Um, and it, it was an interesting movie. I mean, it was at a residential facility for kids and it's, it's really painful. I've counseled a couple families who've had kids go into residential, um, but it was beautiful to see them just light up during that movie. And the, the one young man with Phelps, <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> you know, that was beautiful. So yeah, I, I liked that movie. I think there needs to be more of that brought in for sure. You know, and, and um, you know, this, in a way, this is connected a little bit to mental health because of the um, vaping kids are doing and it's changing their personality a little bit because it's changing the chemistry in their brain. They're finding with excessive use of vaping. Um, 
I'm really excited that Stanford's putting together a program that's free and accessible to all families and they will come out and work with school sites to have peer to peer counselors on it. And I, I love, I love it when you could get peer to peer counselors because there's something so much more impactful coming from a classmate or a schoolmate than from staff and people from outside. So I'm, I'm hoping that the district will seriously look at what they're offering because I'm very excited what I'm seeing with that. Well, it looks to me like you're the woman for the job. I'm glad to be supporting you. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jane. I definitely think that um, having been in the district longer is beneficial because I think you really do, the longer you're in a parent in the district, the more you see and the more you understand the way it operates. And I have to say not to be negative, but one huge issue I have with San Jose Unified is the, um, the culture at the district office, I feel, is just one of like indifference and, um, you know, anytime you ask for something or need something, you're always kind of treated like, oh, you know, like, mm -hmm. and um, I just think, and that, you know, that spreads to staff too and teachers and site administrators. And, and it's frustrating to me because I feel like, you know, we could lose good people because they're treated in a way that's kind of belittling or, you know, not taken seriously or with indifference. So um, I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so. I, yeah. I, well, I, San Jose I, Unified is just such a behemoth. I mean, it's larger yeah. than... Right, right. But I, but it's just, it's the culture though. It's just like, there's automatically like you're met with like, um, no, no, right. not possible. <laughs> right, right. You're exactly. And, and having, you know, been in, in the district for so long, I've seen it over and over and over. Um, and so it's just sad to me because I think that we do lose good teachers um, and, you know, good staff, all the, who would, you know, they're like, well, I'm not going to put up with this if I'm treated, you know, poorly or not with, you know, the respect that I Right. Have. Well, I think they need to be more selective with who they have in charge. When Randy Schmidt was at least principal of Willow Glen High School, he had a date book filled where he made sure he was in touch with all of his teachers, especially <laughs> the ones we all knew and loved, you know, and uh, when he left, they left. Mm. So, yeah. But, mm, right. but even higher up at the district level, I think there's some, it, it could be refreshed a little bit, but. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but like anything, I mean, these people are entrenched and you can't, can't get rid of them. I mean, they're not part of a union. They can be, you know, unlike some teachers, uh, but I don't know. You can't. Well, and, and I hear what you're saying, Heather, because in my advocacy work, I, I every now and then I'd hit the, you're at the wrong forum message. That was the nice way of saying, la, 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 la. Um, right. And, and I would say, well, what is the right forum? And they'd point me back to the handbook. And I'm like, but I've read the handbook from cover to cover. You know, I have, because I brought corrections. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and it's not there. So you tell me and I would not get told. So, um, you know, and, and at the county level, I'm hearing from a lot of the trustees at the county level, they have all the districts in their county. Here, San Jose Unified is their largest and they do not feel collaboration with San Jose Unified. And I, we, that's just, that's toxic for our students. I would love to see better collaboration. Um, you know, and I, I think the situation we're in has certainly forced collaboration and some changes have happened because of that. I was glad to hear um, Nancy Alberon talk about learning a little more about the uh, universal design learning that they're using in Palo Alto Unified because I've been begging for them to look at that for years. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that with everything going on, here we are at a time of amazing transformation and change and with the right people in the right place, something really phenomenal can come out of this. It's going to be painful the next couple of years though, for sure. Did you guys um, see, I, we all got the survey from San Jose Unified and mm -hmm. filled it out, but um, I noticed a link to a Santa Clara County survey that yeah. I thought was, you could give, you could provide feedback in multiple areas of way more than 250 words 
and I, I feel like I wish that um, somehow I don't know how to get more access to people to see that survey or not knowing that San Jose Unified is kind of maybe doesn't play well with everyone else in the county. I don't, I hope that they're able to receive some of the information they get from that survey since it was, it had so many more opportunities for giving our, expressing our opinions and our concerns and just wondering what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I, I was glad to see that through social media and, and that the word's getting out. I've, I posted it to the, the CACSE Facebook page too, to make sure more of the parents in the area were getting it. And I have links with, you know, statewide. Um, so I was reaching out to other leaders in the county to make sure that it was getting out to more of the families throughout the county. So I agree with you. That was the, the county, um, you know, and I think they're, they're seriously looking at how the remote learning has unfolded in all their different districts and they're gauging it on how our responses are to that survey. So that's a very okay. important survey to take. I'm glad you took it and hopefully you shared it with all, all your friends too. In my family, I, I got it on, I saw it on Facebook and I just, I'm not, I haven't used Facebook a lot, so I don't know how to share it, but I'll think, I'll work on it. <laughs> oh, so, so Michelle, I'll you, learn. you I'll could learn. go to, you could go to the survey and then just copy the URL from, from that Perfect. website. And okay. then you don't have to put on Facebook. You could just email it to all of your contacts that you know. That's, from that's school. a great idea. Yeah. yeah. I'll do that. Now, if you don't use Facebook, don't use Facebook. Yeah. I I'm think the county was allowing summer school to open next week, right? For the I county programs? Uh, in general, that was one of the things that I saw that were opening up, that they were allowing for summer school. Classes could not have more than 12 students. I heard that too for like, to, for kids who needed that help to graduate, like a pretty select group. Mm. Not just I it, sure. I'll, have to, I'll look it up, but I thought it was a more general um, wording than that. But I could be wrong. Well, you know, the, the district has been frustrated already losing students to the, the charter schools in the area, and I could just see more of an exodus to, in response to this, of, of parents choosing homeschooling or, you know, even private school options if they could afford it. Um, in, and it's it's going to be challenging to win them back. And I really like um, Dr. Bowers, the superintendent of Allen Rock, and her response to losing students to charter schools was, let let's look at what what the draw is, and let's bring that draw in house so we could draw them back. And I I think eventually that's that's going to be the way that this district is going to need to face that hurdle, because it 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 does. Well, right, and and there have been such a um, discrepancy between teachers and what's available for students. I mean, Liddy had a teacher who literally never contacted her again, and then, um, you know, and then she had Dr. Spodek who was doing like, you know, several things a week, and so I mean, you know, as a parent, and parents are, I don't know, um, well, I know several, a lot of parents are really upset, and and rightfully so, so. Well, I think that's a teacher union thing. You, you can uh, tell teachers what they give them a curriculum, but you can't tell them how to teach it. So while some teachers were great about being interactive and checking in with their students, others just said, posted an assignment and just said, do it. Um, I did find the education, child care, and children's activities open June 5th. All child care, summer camps, summer school, and all other educational or recreational programs for all children in stable groups up to 12 children. Change of group allowed every three weeks. And is this, is this in the county programs only or? It just says for uh, business and government agencies. Okay. Oh. For yeah, Santa Clara County. Shelter, it's the next phase of shelter in place for Santa Clara County. Okay, was that from Cindy Chavez tonight? Uh, I found that one of my friends, uh, Andrea Wheeler, posted. Okay, okay. thank you. She's on the housing is, committee. Is, is that in place now, Jenny? Is, uh, is June 5th, right? so Friday, I believe. Mm -hmm. So starting next week, it should be. Well, that's okay. nice because, you know, we have young adults in, in um, 
you know, day programs, then that means that those programs could start opening up, which would be helpful. Right. So in our last few minutes, Kristen, what, what do you need? What are you looking for? What kind of support? Financial donations, apparently. <laughs> Get your postcards out there. <laughs> right. Right. Um, yes, of course, you, uh, you know, the unfortunate thing about campaigning is you can't do it without um, raising funds. And, and this is a difficult time to have that ask because it's just financially people are, are not as secure as they were you know, months ago. Um, so yes, but there's also other ways you could support. Um, I will have yard signs. Part of Part of my needs with the campaign is to just get known. I'm, um, you know, Carla and I are not very well-known people, and so to get our get um, with your support, if you could display a yard sign or if you are interested in holding a, a you know, house party like this, um, to give me the opportunity to network further with your friends and, and family. Um, and um, you know, and please, if you, I will uh, have talks every other Monday. Um, you know, next Monday I have Trustee DeSalvo coming to the table. I have roundtable talks. So if you're en ever interested in some of the matters that we're bringing to discussion, you just email the the Kristen for Education at gmail.com, and um, I will send you the Zoom uh, link so that you could join in on those conversations, and then. Um, you know, uh, if if you hear a family, um, if you hear, sorry, a, a community meeting happening that you think might not be on my radar that I should be participating in, let me know about that too. But um, I'm, I'll put it in the chat. My website is uh, kristenforeducation.com. And then my email is kristenforeducation at gmail.com. Okay, good. I was typing well today. Sometimes my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes, I, uh, if, if, if uh, I, I appreciate your time tonight and it was really lovely to get a little travel in because, you know, I miss. This travel. might be it for a while <laughs> for us. <laughs> it might be it for um, a while. Where are you going to post the recording? On your website or? Yeah. Um, you know what? I will get it posted. I have a YouTube channel, but it will be a private link because I don't. I don't know if I, are you, do you guys. I could do a public link, um, if it, that's okay with everyone. I thought it was just for. I'm with me. Oh, I'm with me too. Okay. I'm just wondering if I could email it out to everyone that was invited tonight, but that maybe couldn't make it. Yes, we could do that. That would be great. Yes. Perfect. Yes. And you know, and, and I'm also working on endorsements. I have uh, Joseph DeSalvo. I have um, and has endorsed me. Anne Ravel, who's one of our Senate candidates, she's endorsed me. And um, Deb Davis has endorsed me. Some of our other local uh, leaders have asked that I wait until about now to come back to them because I was asking them a little early. But I, I'll follow up, and I, I'm expecting more endorsements. I have the. Uh, interview with the Teachers Association coming up at the end of the, uh, no, the beginning of next week. So it's, it's a whole new world campaigning. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I wished I'd known. No, I don't know that I would have changed. I don't know that I would have changed my mind at all because the opportunity to do the advocacy work I'd like to do and the opportunity to make school life better um, is really something I'm looking forward to. And then of course, improving the communication networking in our community. I, I'm looking forward to doing a lot of that. Yeah, I think signs are probably gonna be the best bang for your buck. Cause it always has your email address and people like to know what their neighbors. Yes. Are thinking, you know what I mean? Yes. It makes a difference, I think. Yes. So. <laughs> So, well, you'll have so to much. send me your address, Jenny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll talk to you one day. <laughs> I'll definitely put your sign in my yard. When we're cutting up more veggies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it before the carrots. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, the carrots. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank well, you. good luck, Kristen. We certainly want to wish you all, a, all the luck in the world. And, and I think you're, I think you're super super well qualified so uh, thank you Jane. You, you have my vote you got the passion 
Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thorough. Very thorough. I appreciate it. Well, thank you all. This was my first open house and it was, it's uh, familiar faces is just the best way to get a start. I really appreciate it. Good. All right. Good, good, good luck. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good luck. to see you, everybody. Yeah, good to see you. Thanks, Leslie and Jeff. Bye. Bye, Heather. Bye, Michelle. Bye. 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 Bye